Okay, gentlemen, so today we're going to do a demonstration, or I'm going to do a demonstration involving magnesium and hydrochloric acid. And as I do this, I want you to use this sheet, which is available. You can either write on loose leaf or actually print this out uh, and fill it out and kind of uh, make your predictions and observations. What we will be doing is adding magnesium to hydrochloric acid. Uh, and you should know that if you take a metal like magnesium uh, by itself and then an ionic compound or in this case an acid with hydrogen it's going to be a single replacement reaction the magnesium is going to try to replace the chlorine or the sorry the magnesium is going to try to replace the hydrogen and in this case it's higher on that activity series the magnesium is stronger and more attractive so the magnesium will end up with the chlorine and hydrogen will end up by itself however uh, we have a couple things we have to worry about. First of all, that's H2. Hydrogen gas is always H2. Uh, and magnesium makes a plus two charge. Uh, so whenever we make a new ionic compound, magnesium with its plus two charge and chloride with its minus one charge have to be balanced out. So how many chlorines would I need to balance out of magnesium? I would need two. So it's magnesium plus hydrochloric acid gives me magnesium chloride, which is MgCl2, uh, plus hydrogen. Uh, now, really quickly, we're going to balance this. I see I need two chlorines on this side uh, and two hydrogens on this side, and that's the balance equation. One magnesium plus two hydrochloric acids gives us a magnesium chloride and a hydrogen gas, which is H2. So each side has one magnesium, two hydrogens, and two chlorines. That's a balance equation. Uh, so now I'm going to talk about how we set this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure out the appropriate amounts of magnesium. Uh, these are just little pieces of magnesium, magnesium flakes. I have zeroed my balance, my electronic balance, and I'm going to measure out 0 0.6 for reaction A. Uh, and there we have 0 0.6. Now I'm going to do the same things for reactions B and C. I'm going to measure out 0 0.6 for one, 1 1.2 grams for another one, and 2.4 grams for C. And I'll show you all of them, uh, but I'm not going to take a video of me weighing out each one. I think you guys can handle it. So after I weigh out the metals, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the metal into a balloon. So i got a balloon here. Uh, I'm going to blow up the balloon a little bit. Apparently, there we go. Now the reason I blow up the balloon ahead of time uh, is not just for fun and the excitement of, you know, balloons. Uh, it's to get it stretched out uh, so that when the reaction takes place, the hydrogen gas can push it apart. Uh, so in order to get this metal into the balloon, I'm going to use a great tool, a funnel. So I'm going to put the funnel over the balloon like this. And so funnel, balloon, see how that's attached. Fix this up a little bit. Get the scale because I don't feel like it. Uh, and then simply add my magnesium. Shake it so it's on the bottom. Uh, and then that's my balloon for reaction A. I'm going to do the same things with the balloons for reaction B and C, but with different amounts of magnesium, and uh, then I'll come back and talk about actually setting up the reaction. Okay, gentlemen, so all the balloons are filled with the appropriate amounts of metal. Uh, balloon A is 0.6 grams of magnesium. Uh, balloon for reaction B is 1.2 grams of magnesium. And the balloon for reaction C has 2.4 grams, so doubling each time. I'm going to add to each of these Erlenmeyer flasks 100 milliliters of what is known as one molar hydrochloric acid. Molar or molarity is just a concentration. It tells us how much acid is dissolved in that water. Uh, each of these is getting the same amount of dissolved acid, the equivalent of 3.65 grams of hydrochloric acid. Uh, so that will be the same. 
Uh, so I measured out in a graduated cylinder, as you should, uh, and I'm going to add it to each of the three uh, Erlenmeyer flasks. And I will come back when that is done. Okay, so to each of the three flasks, I've added 100 milliliters exactly of the hydrochloric acid. And you'll notice they all have this pink or red tint. Uh, and that's because I added something called the universal indicator. Uh, it's a pH indicator. Uh, just looks like this. And what it does is it is red when something is acidic. Those things, the Erlenmeyer flask will have hydrochloric acid in there, so they're very acidic right now. And it turns clear uh, when something turns basic. Uh, so if that hydrochloric acid gets used up, as our, our equation would indicate, uh, so our equation, two magnesiums plus two hydrochloric acids makes magnesium chloride and hydrogen. If we use up all this hydrochloric acid at the point where it's all used up, uh, the liquid, which is gonna be magnesium chloride dissolved in water, that will turn clear. Uh, so you will be able to tell if all the hydrochloric acid has gotten used up. Uh, for the magnesium, we'll be able to tell if it got used up because we can just see it. Uh, so what I'm going to do for each of these uh, is stretch the balloons over the mouths of the Erlenmeyer flasks, uh, and then uh, we will do the reaction. Uh, but this is a pain to do, so I don't want to try to record it because there's just too much going on with that, and I don't want to break anything. So I'll be back, and we will do the reaction. Okay, so now all the balloons have been stretched over the mouth of the flask, and I'm going to start the reaction. Now remember, there's magnesium in the balloons, and to start the reaction, I simply lift the balloon and add the magnesium into the hydrochloric acid. And as you can see, there's some bubbling and also some production of a gas. That's hydrogen being made, that's the H2 gas. So, try to remind you which one has which thing. That's out of the way there. So if we look at these, uh, as we go through the reaction, uh, A is starting off the slowest. It doesn't have a very big balloon right now. Uh, B is in the middle, and C has the biggest balloon of all. Uh, but we don't know if that's because the reactions are going faster, uh, and one is going to end before the other ones, uh, and the other ones will catch up, or uh, because there's just more stuff and it's going to make more gas. So what we're going to have to do is wait for the reactions to complete. Uh, you'll notice with C, which is going very fast, uh, if I compare it to, say, A, if you look at the colors of the liquid, color of the liquid in there, the color of the liquid in C is already almost clear. And in A, it is very much still uh, pink, meaning that in C, the acid is almost all used up, whereas in A, uh, and in B, in fact, it is not. However, the reactions are still going, uh, so we'll come back in a couple minutes when the reactions have completed. Okay, gentlemen, so the reactions are almost done. Uh, a couple are still kind of going on a little bit, um, particularly reaction B. Uh, as you can see, uh, reaction A, this one, uh, that reaction by far produced the least amount of hydrogen gas. It produced the least product. Uh, reactions B and C, even though C started out a lot faster, uh, reactions B and C seem to produce pretty much the same amount of gas. In other words, the balloons are about the same size. Now, one other difference you might note about each of the containers is their color, uh, the color of the liquid inside. Container A, which is the one with the small uh, balloon, is still very pink. That means the hydrochloric acid did not get used up. There's still plenty of hydrochloric acid in there. Uh, container B, or flask B, uh, is a little bit pink, but almost clear. So its hydrochloric acid is pretty much used up, and that, that one still has a little bit of reaction going on. Uh, and finally, in reaction C, all the hydrochloric acid has been used up. It is clear there is no more acid there. We can also see 
how much of the magnesium was used up, and I'll show you in a sec. So, for reaction A, let me bring it down, there is no magnesium in here at all. Like you can't see any magnesium pieces at all. So all the magnesium was used up in this reaction. In reaction B, it's a similar situation. There's still a few magnesium pieces. I said this reaction is still going on a little bit. There's still a few magnesium pieces, uh, but for the most part, there's no like big chunks of magnesium anywhere. You can see the little bubbling that's off the few magnesium pieces and they're still reacting. But pretty much it looks like the magnesium and the hydrochloric acid are both pretty much used up here. Finally, in reaction C, let's get a good shot of this. At the bottom here, you can see all this black stuff. It's reversed. There we go. All right. Here, this is hard to do in reverse. All of that is magnesium. So if I spin it around, let's see if you can actually see. That's ah, a little too cloudy. However, at the bottom, you can see all of that extra magnesium sitting there. Uh, that means that a lot of the magnesium did not get used, uh, but the hydrochloric acid got used. So in A, again, all the magnesium got used. In B, all the magnesium got used. And in C, the magnesium did not all get used. Uh, but in B and C, it looks like most or all the hydrochloric acid got used. Uh, A did not use all the hydrochloric acid. Uh, so those are the results. Uh, and you can go through and determine what that means. Uh, there's one more thing I want to do with these, but I have to get some uh, more distance between the balloons and my... Okay, gentlemen, so the last thing that we're doing, which is unrelated to the worksheet, but it's just for fun, uh, we have those balloons filled with hydrogen gas. And hydrogen gas would like nothing more than to combine back with oxygen gas and make water, according to... Oop, Let's see, this reaction. So, there we go. Two hydrogens plus an oxygen give you H2O. So, again, that's a balanced equation. This is a very exothermic reaction. Exothermic is a term that means it gives off a lot of energy, in this case, in the form of heat and light. So, we are going to take our... Let me see if I can get it to zoom back in. There we go. Uh, we are going to take our hydrogen balloon and introduce it to some oxygen at a high temperature. And to do that is fairly simple. I just need to get the proper tools, which are, in this case, a meter stick with a candle on the end and a lighter. So the meter stick gives me some distance between me and the explosion. And we'll do the baby one first. Okay, let's do one of the bigger ones next. A little more impressive. And finally, our last guy. So, at least you got some good explosions. Uh, again, that last reaction is just this. Hydrogen and oxygen really want to be water, and they give off a lot of energy when they become water. Uh, so we just made a bunch of water vapor. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, one other thing, make sure to fill out the worksheet that goes with this. Grab that. So, again, you can either print it out yourself or do it on loose leaf, but make sure you fill out the worksheet and answer the questions on the front and the back. That is the homework for this. Uh, enjoy. Have a good day.